So, now we've made a base of our box. I've left it to dry a little bit just to give it a bit more strength before we make the holes. Now, the holes for the actual lever part, when you look at the side of your box, you've got an angle just there. That is where you want to make your hole. Now I'm using my pokey tool to do it. You could if you wanted to use a paper punch, a hole punch, whatever you choose. The only reason I'm using my pokey tool is because when I made my one I actually used these tiny tiny mini breads that Stampin' Up! do and they're very very small so I didn't want my hole to be too big so I've used my pokey tool for making my holes now it's probably safer actually if you mark it with a pencil first rather than just jabbing your finger in there so let's mark a little dot roughly at the top of that angle and then whoops watching your fingers so making sure we do not go into the flesh I'm just gonna pop my pokey tool through now I know that doesn't really sound very accurate as far as making a cantilever box is concerned but believe me it works out exactly the right spot there we go so that's all our holes done so that is now ready for when we put our other boxes on top so let me move that to one side bring my simply scoreboard back in again and we're actually going to start making the boxes that go on the bottom now so two of these are required as we have two boxes for the top, not the bottom, as I just said, these are going on the top. I'm trying to get my board straight. There we go. Now, these are 8.25 or 8 and a quarter by 7 inches. And very, very simple on this one. All you need to do is score at 1.5, 5.5, turn it round, 1.5, 6 and 3 quarters. Or in other words, it's just one and a half all the way around. So you could just do one and a half and turn, one and a half and turn, whichever is your preference. Some people do it one way, other people do it different ways. Right, grab and fold along all the score loins. Score loins. Fold along all the score loins. Fold along all the score lines and burnish them myself at a different part of the country there didn't I and then we need to just cut and notch into the corner don't need those little notchy bits always try and do that notch because it helps to keep your box in a nice shape and it also means that when you fold these flaps in they actually sit into the box much better than if you left them as a straight edge. It's only a smudge of a difference but it does make such a big difference when you're making boxes. So we cut them all in like that, there we go. Using our wet glue again. Put a nice dollop on and another dollop on. In case you wonder what that clunk was, I always keep my glue upside down in a glass, like so. Just means I'm not sitting there forever trying to shake it up the right way. In fact, a friend of mine said about doing that. And funnily enough, another crafting friend of mine, her name is Roz, she said to me once about she does it as well, but where I use uh, a relatively big glass because I'm always dropping it everywhere she said about using a shot glass which again it's quite a good idea so Ros if you're watching thank you for that tip and anybody else who 
suddenly realises actually it's a great tip. Thank Ros because she's a star. Right, so sticking those in. Whoops. Folding those corners nicely. There you go. Now I always use my Simply Score tool for this and I don't think I'm going to be able to get a view where you can actually see it very well but what I basically do is I use my score tool with it flat to actually just crease around those edges because if you try and stick your finger into the corners when you're making a box you'll either end up moving the edge of the box or you'll end up with a finger covered in glue there we go so one box done now we also need to whoops, where are we? make the lid for our box now again back with our scoreboard now this piece measures what does this measure this one is six and seven eighths by six and a quarter with your six and a quarter bit at the top you want to be scoring at three quarters one and a half and five and a half. Oops, that's a bit of glue there. Turn it round so you're on the six and seven eighths line, edge I mean. Score it at three quarters and then score again at six and one eighth. All right, move that back up the way and we do some more folding and burnishing. way round. Now we've actually got what you might think is a bit of a strange shape here but the reason we're doing it like this is because this edge here is actually going to fold back on itself. So we're going to end up with this sort of concertina effect going on almost. I'll show you why in a minute. Let's just cut our edges in. Now you want to cut this tab off here and again here and this bit is actually going to fold inside the box so this is sort of going to be the, the inner flap of the box so what I do with mine using my corner punch if you fold that piece in you can actually slip it in there quite nicely and just round your corner and again on that side if you want to be precise you could even turn it over which is what I do quite often especially if I've got something really small and fiddly because if you turn it over you can actually gauge how far in can you see whether it's straight or not underneath there we go move those out of the way so that's our inner flap now this part Cut up those straight edges. Slight, very, very slight notch just at the bottom of that one. Very, very slight again on the opposite side. And then we want a big notch and a small one because this is going to be the same as it was for the bottom box. So a small notch and a big one, whoops. And then with scissors, again, whether you decide to do it with a ruler and a pencil or just cut it, whichever you prefer, but we just want to cut just down along that line there just gives the box a much nicer finish I think on the lids I mean I have seen quite a few done where the edges of the box have been left square but oh dear now you see that has gone a bit squiffy so maybe it would be better if you use the pencil and the ruler um, what was I saying yeah I have seen some of the boxes where it's actually been left 
with the the flaps that go down the side square which you can do if you want to I mean it's entirely up to you whether you want to do it square or if you want to do it at an angle what I think though from a personal point of view the the way that I'm doing this box it's quite girly and because it's quite girly I want it to be a bit delicate looking I think maybe if I was doing it for one of my sons rather than for my daughters or daughter rather gosh she'll kill me if I say that I have one daughter and three sons I have to remember that um, if I was doing it for my daughter, I do it girly. If I'm doing it for one of my sons, I do it more, more boyishly, sort of boyy, boyy, manny, manny boyy. Right. Okay. Oops. Grabbing our glue again. We're just going to glue along the flap this time. We're not going to do it all the way. Nice dollop of glue. Wipe that off there. Slide your box in, make sure it's nice and straight, and then just fold up, stick down. Any glue you get on the edge, just wipe it off. It's not really going to see anyway because it's going to be underneath your box, so don't worry about it too much. Just make sure it's all nicely and firmly oops, stuck. Now once that's dry, that will actually be really strong. So although it looks fairly flimsy, by the time all that glue is set properly and dried off, you're actually going to have a very strong little box. Now with your flap you could either have it hanging over the top like that, or if you wanted to tuck it in. Either way, because it works on both ways. Where well, we've actually done this at a taper, it works both ways. So whatever you decide to do. But this is one that I was doing earlier. And I've actually put all the decorative panels on this one already. And it is. It's actually really strong. I wouldn't stand on it. It's not that strong. But it is pretty strong. <laughs> right, so to decorate your box... Now, I've already cut my pieces to go around the edges. So I'm going to pop them on, because as you can see, I've already stamped them as well. Again, using the same stamp that we've gone on the side there. I was the wrong way then, wasn't it? Because they're going to be going on to the box, and like I've said before so many times already, I want the box nice and strong, they're going to be glued on. Another benefit of having super strong, super quick drying glue is it doesn't warp your card or your paper. It looks like it's going to when you stick it on, but it dries so well that you don't actually realise it's been glued on. You know usually if you have glue on boxes or on paper it all starts to go thin and flimsy and you get that ripple all over it. Not with this glue. This glue is a dream to work with. It's incredibly sticky though if you get it on your hands, I will warn you. So if you're a bit of a messy crafter like I tend to be, not always the best choice. But after a while, you learn what you're doing with it. Right, and let's do. Whoops. Fingers and thumbs, as ever. I'm having to slide it off the table every time, so I'm sorry it keeps going out of the actual camera, but otherwise, I'll end up glue all over my hands. Stick that one on. There we go. It's nice and straight, isn't it? Now, for the back piece that's going to go onto this side, you could, if you wanted to, just stick it straight on, which is fine, but you will find that if you do that, it actually makes opening and closing it a little bit difficult. So, what I do, you can probably see it on this one, is I score before I stick it. Okay, so just bring in 
our scoreboard back in again. Where's my scoring tool? Bro? You want to be scoring it at five eighths because this piece I actually measure mine and I do mine at one and a quarter so the width of the box or the depth of the box I should say is one and a half I just take off a quarter of an inch so I'm left with one and a quarter half that gives me five eighths so I'm just going to score it straight down at five eighths and I'm actually going to score it on both sides because I want it to be very flexible There you go, like, so if we fold it, we want to be able to fold it and burnish it and then doing the same on the other side. So we've actually given ourselves a really flexible bend and then when we put our glue on, we can line it up Whoops. with the bend that's actually... Right, I've just been editing the film for you to put it onto YouTube and I've just realised that the camera cut out a bit of my film. Bad workman always blames his tools and all that, obviously. So I just wanted to show you what I was actually doing there. This edge here, this is the bit that I was just sticking on. So I've put the glue onto the back of it, but I've lined that score line running along there. I've actually lined it up with the score line on the box so that when the lid opens and closes you have a nice easy open and close it's not too stiff because otherwise I tried one before when I was doing the prototype for this um, I didn't score it and it made it really really hard to get a nice open and close movement going on it was very stiff very solid and it either stay open completely and not close or it stay closed and I couldn't get it to open properly all right so score it first before you put it on and then once it's stuck on as I said it'll do this nicely <laughs> right now the other bit we're going to be doing next which was also cut out we're going to be putting this panel on here all right so now I've just filmed that other little bit for you I'll pop it into the film that's going to go onto YouTube so you'll see it and you'll know what's going on when it suddenly flashes into one bit and then flashes back out again. Okay? Good. So what we need to do, first of all, let's just stamp a piece of card. Now this one is crumb cake and I'm using the sprinkles. And we just really just want to do a random pattern all over the card. Go over the edge a bit. Just makes it look a bit more printed if you like rather than just being stamped there we go that'll do and then using the blushing bride we're just going to dot some flowers on there I ran out of ink earlier hence it's got funny lines on it now because I, re I was refilling the ink I need to spread it out a little bit more evenly by the looks of things so but we're just Dot those little flowers around just so it gives a bit of a kind of a random pattern. That'll do, I think. Whoop. Try not to do that, especially if it lands up the wrong way. That's never a good idea, and it probably burst your eardrums just then as well. So I do apologise. Right, let's stick that onto our crumb cake. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm not doing it at all well, am I? <laughs> First of all, I deafen you <laughs> with the ink pad and then I whack the tripod for the tape gun. Oh dear. <laughs> I'll try really hard not to do that again. I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh look, and the card's too big anyway. Oh, I know which one's the wrong size. Let's have a look. Oh, it's... <laughs> it looks like it's the crumb cake. Oh dear. Right, where's my board gone? There we are. Oh, it's all good fun, isn't it? So happy <laughs> do I want it to be. Right, that measures four and seven eighths. So if we go in a quarter, we want it four and five fifths. No, we want it four and five eighths. 
Oh, goodness me. Well, I'll be glad when the summer holidays are over, I think. I'll get my brain back into normal working mode. Right, let's try that again. Yay! It fits, it fits! Super duper! Right, now then, what do we need to do next? Oh, we're going to put our flowers on next, aren't we? Let's pop the flowers on. So we have three, one, two, three, and I have got a darker one somewhere. There we are, there's my darker one. And let's try one without a bit of wire on the end. There we go. Right, grab our glue, nice big dollop of glue. There we go. Now, get them roughly how you want them and just plop them on. I'm not, as you've probably gathered, the most precise person when it comes to crafting. I believe that when you craft you should enjoy it not worrying about exacts so I tend to just dollop things around a bit there we go let's just wipe that off oh I hope you didn't just get my head in it then I'm just going to wipe that bit of glue off from around the edge there there we go pop that in there now if I just keep my hand over that just to keep that while it dries for a minute because where they're um, foam flowers it does take a little bit more to dry than the normal ones but when that one's done this is what we're going to be left with now I've got some leaves that I've already punched so there we go so we can put those in as well is that done? yep that's quite sturdy so if we just tuck them under there and I see by tucking them under they are loose at the moment but because there's still wet glue under there it's going to hold them in quite nicely. Let me pop them under. I'll just tuck that one in the top if it wants to go in there. Maybe, maybe not. Go on, there you go. There we are. And then with our dimensionals, let's get that off my finger. Let's put some dimensionals on the back that way it's going to sit nicely off of the actual lid just makes it look a bit more effective there we go let's get that out of the way heal off those oh it's getting dull outside I hope that doesn't mean it's going to stop pouring with rain in a minute had much of a very good summer really have we it's been sweltering hot for a little while and then it went all cold again right pop that whoops pop that on there and there we have our two top boxes so these will sit quite nicely on top of the actual base box and they'll be attached to each other using the cantilever struts. Now, for making the holes, I've already made some holes on this one. I'm hoping you're gonna see this if the camera stays in focus. You want to go down half an inch and across half an inch. And that will give you the perfect place to make your hole. All right, so down half an inch and across half an inch. Now, like I said, these measurements are all going to be on my blog, so don't worry if you don't remember them all. Let's mark that one on this side. Whoops, let's open that up again. So we go, so I go fingers and thumbs again. Down half an inch and across half an inch make a mark same on the other side Oops. down half an inch and across half an inch make a mark 
find the pokey tool which is probably buried amongst all sorts of stuff that I've got on my desk. There we go. Mind your fingers please. I nearly had a rather nasty accident doing this one earlier. Fortunately, I didn't make too much mess. Right, there we go. So, now we can actually find our struts. There we go. There's our struts. One, two, three. Ah, oh, just need to make some more holes in these. Let's just stick this one together. Now I haven't got the strongest of hands unfortunately, I have um, a bit of a nasty disease that restricts my movement sometimes. So I can't use the stamping up punches, the handheld punches, the, the small sort of lever action ones. I find them a bit too difficult for me. So I use my nice big trusty super duper one. Now we need to go down or go in rather I should say by five eighths and in the center and then punch the hole. Whoops, there's one. So five eighths in punch hole. There we go. Right now then where did I put those little brads? I would, oh, I haven't stuck those ones on yet, that'll be why they're sitting next to me, looking at me waving, going, hey, don't forget us, let's pop them on as well, otherwise I'll be wondering why the box isn't very strong, won't I, I'll be saying, oh my goodness, that's a bit weak and wussy, now I'm doing this with tape now, just for speed, because I've realised these should have already gone on and dried and they haven't so don't do as I do, do as I say as my nan used to say to me whoops, well that was lucky I thought that was going to be stuck fast then and I wouldn't be able to move it use double sided tape I suppose there's nothing to stop you it just will be a lot stronger if you use the wet glue rather than the double sided tape let's move that out of the way right now we need a brad poke that through because this is where we are going to start putting our box together whoops you know what else I've forgotten brain like a sieve. I was just thinking now that went through that hole far too easily what was going on there. I've made little flowers like goes in the flower first and then it goes in there. Oh, it'd be dangerous I actually thought about this properly wouldn't I? You wait. Children go back to school and I'll be saying, yay, all my videos are going to be so professional because the children have gone back to school and they'll probably be exactly the same. Just as here, there and everywhere. Just as unorganised. We can close the lids and then bring our box together. There we go. Right, so that now we have done the basics of our box. So the next thing to do, in fact the last thing to do really is the handle. So with the two long strips that you've cut and you've had set aside, grab your glue again. Just put roughly an inch, I'd say, there or thereabouts. 
stick them together. Make sure they're nice and straight. This is where your grid paper comes in well because you can look at that. Look, see, just straighten it up nicely. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There we go. Now I've got some very vanilla satin ribbon, and what I've done is I've actually stuck on the back of this already some double sided tape. And as if by magic it's done. <laughs> We've got it apart. So, that down the middle of your ribbon. Now, you may have noticed there, I was doing it with two hands and it wasn't moving. What I actually do is I stick it to the table at one end so that I can use two hands and not have it all wiggling around everywhere. Little tip for you there. Okay. And there. Push it all down nicely. Just nip off that end. Make sure that's all nicely stuck, firm. Now to actually attach it to your box, you take your ruler, measure in around about one and a half inches. Yeah, about that, that'll do. Fold it over. Same on the other end, about one and a half. Just crease it round and just fold that over and give it a good squeeze just to make sure you've got a nice crease there. Same on the other end. Now with your sequins, I would suggest, although you've only just stuck them on, you actually pull the sequins out. Now they come out quite easily if you tug. Once you've got the first couple, oops, the rest do come out quite easily. Now the reason it's a little bit tough is because the way they actually oh, make these, it's all woven underneath there so that when you cut the sequin trim it doesn't all the sequins don't come falling off there you go let's pull them through now when you stick this to your box your picnic box you need to be a little bit careful that you don't go up too far onto the side of your box because if you go up too far then it's going to affect the top boxes from opening. All right now I'm going to use double-sided tape for this one simply because I need to make sure I get it in the right spot and if you put glue white glue on top of ribbon that's already stuck on with double sided tape it tends to weaken it for some reason I don't really know why oops let's take that off of there trying not to rip the ribbon at the same time Now this is where you can line it up quite well as long as you look at what you're doing so you're going to have to just bear with me if my head suddenly appears it's so I can just so that I can see exactly where I need to be going with my handle. I want to go oops, about there I think it's about oops that's about the middle isn't it yeah about there Hold that under, 
same on the other side trying not to stick it to everything else that's on your desk at the same time again let's keep it nice and straight pinged off at me there did you see that <laughs> there we go stick that on there fold it under there now if we just open that up ah oh, I lost my leaves look under there. If ever you do that, you ever do something like this and you get a bit of sticky left like in here. I've put my tape up a little bit too high on this side here, just there. You just get a bit of um, talcum powder or even you could use an embossing buddy. One of these little things that you use when you're doing your embossing. Just tap it on and the powder will actually get rid of the sticky for you. A little tip for you there. Right, there's our handle. Let's give it a little bit of a curve. Close our lids. So there's one lid. Oh, it's caught on the edges again. Don't force it, you will damage it, she says to herself. That's caught where? Oh, it's around there. It's because I've got that bit open. There we go, let's pop. Put that bit round. No. It's stuck on something somewhere. And I don't know where it is. Oh, it's there. Look. <laughs> it was the handle. Oh, silly, silly. That's all right after a while. Once it's been there for a little while and you've opened and closed it a few times, it works perfectly. There we go. One cantilever picnic box. Looking all nice and pretty. So I've got one there and we've got one here. Now, this one, much more sturdy. This one, not so sturdy because inside I haven't actually lined the base of my box remember the more layers you put in the stronger you're going to make it so line the light the inside of your box including your lid it makes it look nicer apart from anything else and also this one has dried this one is still a bit wet so where the glue's a bit wet that's still on there now if you want to do the bow the same as my one that I've done on here. What I've done there is another flower, so exactly the same as what I used underneath. Stuck that on, and then I tied a bow using some of the Stampin' Up Venetian crochet trim. Just pull off a length, tie it into a nice bow, and then in the centre of the bow. one of these lovely buttons. I like these buttons. These are really cute. I think they look very pretty. These are called the Designer Vintage Faceted Buttons and you get 24 in the pot there. It's quite good value really because they're very lovely. Now where I've done this bow I've actually used two lengths of the crochet trim and tied the bow both at the same time which has given me this double loop bow and then I just found some very thin ribbon that I had sticking around my room from something or other from another project that I'd made a while back. So I popped that on there as well and I actually threaded, I don't know if you can see that, but I threaded the ribbon through the button before I put it on there and then just attached it with a glue dot because the glue dots are so strong. It's amazing really. Pop that one on with your flowers. If you just pull up your petals and you get this 3D effect. Now with the flowers, I've actually punched these out using the itty bitty punch, the flower bit from the itty bitty punch. And each one is two blushing brides and one pear pizzazz. Gives a kind of effect of leaves underneath, I think. So, there you have it. There is your cantilever picnic box. 
with a bit at the top and a bit at the bottom. And this is a nice pretty pink one. I'm also going to be doing one for Christmas out of the new Christmas papers and I will also, if I get a chance, do a Halloween one as well so that my children can have their Halloween treats inside but I always do them one like this for Christmas anyway because they always have a Christmas Eve box and this is perfect for their Christmas Eve box because inside it, what are you just to show you what I would usually do with them at Christmas Eve, I actually put little dividers in there and they have their hot chocolate and they have some um, stripy straws, like stripy paper straws and underneath there they have some snacks like some raisins or some sort of dried fruit goes in the bottom bit. I also make sure there's a card and an envelope in there as well so that they can actually write a thank you card to Santa to thank him for all the presents that he will give them. So when I've done my Christmas one, I'll show you the Christmas one as well so you'll see that one. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry about my giggling where I cut my card too long and making you deaf when I kept whacking the tripod as well. <laughs> but hopefully you enjoyed my video. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye!